Well, hey guys, it's Dr. Drake 63 here today, and uh, going to talk about a new to me firearm. Love it when I get to do that. I love new to me or brand new, whatever it is. Uh, love love it when I get my hands on a new firearm, and this one's a little bit different. This is my first black powder firearm. This is a uh, reproduction Hawken that's made by Invest Arms. They're Italian. They're the same people that make the Lymans. And uh, uh, this one is in 54 caliber, which is um, the biggest caliber firearm that I have ever owned as well. So uh, kind of interesting from that standpoint. But uh, from the research that I've done, it appears this is kind of a, a middle of the road uh, to entry level kind of firearm. And I've seen great reviews on them by people that get great accuracy, folks that have had them for a long time. And uh, I'm not somebody that has a problem with a non-American made rifle. Uh, if you look back through my uh, my video catalog, you'll see me talking about how much I love uh, the Uberti 1873 Winchester uh, takeoff. So definitely don't have a problem with uh, Italian craftsmanship. In fact, I think they do a pretty good job. This one right here, uh, what we're going to talk about today, just a tiny bit on the history of the Hawken. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, we're going to shoot it. And we're going to talk about some rookie mistakes that uh, this black powder rookie made uh, while at the range today. But uh, these rifles uh, started showing up. They are made by the Hawken brothers out of St. Louis, Missouri, which happens to be my original hometown. And um, uh, these were never, you know, military commission firearms. Uh, there is uh, some, some uh, anecdotal evidence that uh, militias and so forth might have used these in the Civil War. But uh, these came onto the scene uh, and started hitting the big time in the 1830s. And this is what a mountain man would have wanted, okay? Um, a little bit bigger caliber than the Kentucky rifle has a, a, a more compact feel to it, shorter barrel, and um, uh, that's what a mountain man would get. If you watch Jeremiah Johnson, uh, he's talking about his hawk, and uh, Jim Bridger, the famous mountain man, was known for his use of the hawk and rifle. And these were very handy uh, in, in the, the respect of a hunting rifle, uh, something to take down buffalo, something to uh, take down or protect yourself against grizzly bears. So the reason I picked this up was because in my state, uh, you don't have the ability to hunt uh, r regular rifles through the duration of the hunting season. It's a pretty close window of a couple, two or three weeks, depending on what part of the state. However, you can get almost an extra month if you're going to fire a black powder rifle. And that means a whole lot less hunting pressure, a whole lot less congestion. So uh, I bought it for the extended hunting season. I also bought it for its cool factor. I just love this. If you look here, you can see this, uh, this compartment on the back where you keep your patches. Uh, you see a double trigger there. This back one is a set trigger. You can pull the trigger and fire the firearm, but if you hit the set trigger first, uh, you're looking at uh, a hair trigger almost, which is something that takes a little getting used to. Um, really, the only thing that's, that's kind of off on this is if you look real close, you see it has a modern adjustable rear sight instead of uh, the buckhorn that would have come with it. And I'd like to have that on here, but at the same point in time, uh, with my eyes and, and looking at paper targets out of 50 and 100 yards, I appreciate the ability to adjust this sight as opposed to calculating, say, Kentucky windage or something like that. But uh, uh, these are great guns, and the one thing you need to know, if, if you don't know anything else, the one thing you need to know about, about any black powder rifle is do not, do not ever use non-black powder in them. Don't use smokeless powder, don't use modern reloading powder, things like that. Very bad things can happen. Uh, it's not as much about power as it is about burn rate. And uh, I've seen a number of videos where similar size loads grain-wise have been put in uh, to these kinds of rifles of smokeless powder, and it just plain blows the barrel up. It's crazy. So if you, if you don't learn anything else out of this video and you're interested in pursuing black powder, never, never, never use anything but prescribed black powder 
inside of this rifle. So um, let's take a look at it. So I mentioned right here, that's leaf. I mentioned right here that this is a an area that you can put some of your shooting supplies. You could put you could put primers in there. It's mo mostly for patch or tools, uh, but just very nice, beautiful woodwork. Um, a lot of the uh, uh, the Hawkins that were used in the day did not have all the fancy brass. They were pretty much plain Jane, uh, and I'd like to have one of those as well. I won't lie, but just looking at uh, some of the craftsmanship. Some come with this engraved kind of design. You see it, it's got, uh, it's got that uh, case hardened look about it. And then you get up to your hammer and what you see right there is called a nipple. And the nipple's purpose is to seat a primer over and that tube goes down to the chamber where the, the uh, powder is added. Okay, and one of the things that uh, you'll see from the shooting video is that I actually had a situation where I made a stupid rookie mistake. I took the patch and the ball, I'd measured my powder, but I forgot to put the powder in the, in the end of the barrel. And there is a, a device that's like a, a screw that goes on to your cleaning rod uh, that supposedly works for getting that ball out. I had no luck, so I went to a different uh, a different approach and I took this nipple off and I took this screw and I loaded the majority of my powder uh, into the chamber that way uh, and that worked. It says before using gun read warnings and instruction manual well I did all that as well as watched a ton of YouTube videos uh, but I still made a stupid rookie mistake so as I mentioned going down the barrel this is not uh, an authentic in any way rear sight but what it is, is fully uh, adjustable for windage and elevation. And since I'm going to use this as a hunting rifle, probably leave that alone for now. This right here is actually a peg that holds the barrel in place. It also hooks in at the back of the barrel. Uh, and for what it looks like it would be, you'd think it might be kind of loose or something that would loosen up, but didn't have any problems with that at all. Again, more brass. This cleaning rod, octagonal barrel, is beautifully made and plenty of front sight to see. So no issues with that whatsoever. But I would just call this a, uh, a beautiful firearm. They, these aren't really expensive. I've seen prices for them all over the place. Uh, Invest Arms for a while made these for Cabela's. And... Uh, now, I believe Cabela's is partnered with somebody else. Traditions is a Spanish company. They make a lot of kits. And uh, they're kind of considered the low end of the market. TC is considered kind of the high. And then you get into custom-built jobs, thousands of bucks. But uh, I was able to pick this one up uh, for a pretty good price. Everything I needed to shoot plus this rifle and uh, I only shelled out uh, uh, less than 350 bucks which seems like a heck of a deal considering what what you're getting in terms of the metal and the craftsmanship and things like that philosophy of use range and hunting and I want to say today I shot somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 15 rounds and that took me in about an hour and a half. I had to do some troubleshooting, which we kind of discussed. This rifle did everything I needed it to do when I did what I was supposed to do. The other issue I had, you need to check that nipple, make sure there's not debris. I put a percussion cap on there, uh, and it was kind of clogged with some debris. And the cap went off, but it didn't discharge the, the weapon. So I basically took a little piece of wire and uh, clean that out, did it again, and she took off fine. One thing to note, you're dealing with black powder, you're going to get dirty. You have to have some patience, and you're going to make mistakes sooner or later. I'm glad I made a couple today. I learned a lot. And you can guarantee you that I'm going to be less concerned with fiddling around with my camera and more concerned with proper loading protocol from now on. 
So before somebody gives me guff about my, my new purse, it's a shooting bag. Why do you need a shooting bag when you shoot a, uh, a percussion or flintlock black powder rifle? Well, because there's just a whole lot of stuff that you're going to need. And some of the stuff's going to be a turnoff for guys right off the bat. Um, this shoots 54 caliber, but you're looking at .53 on the diameter. And the reason for that is you need to load these with a patch. So first you put your powder in, then you use one of these patches. This is pre-lubricated. Here's some ones made out of uh, bed material, ticking material. It's real important to have the right kind of thickness of this and the right diameter because uh, what's going to improve your accuracy is how tight everything is. Here's the projectiles that it shoots. Now today I was just shooting these guys. Imagine getting hit one of these guys with uh, 70 or 80 grains of powder in back of it. Not fun. This also shoots a more aerodynamic ballistic shape conical bullet. And as you see right here, you've got some, some recesses in it, which um, I believe are helpful in terms of uh, grabbing a hold of the rifling. This is a, uh, a rifled barrel, not a smooth bore. I did not shoot these today. These uh, are very, very super tight compared to the balls to pack in, which might help with your accuracy in addition to the ballistic shape. And uh, I want to get a, uh, a range rod that's, that's adept for that as opposed to busting something. But uh, here you can kind of see, got quite a bit of shooting you can do with this stuff right here. I do believe for deer, which is my intended hunting use, that I want to use one of these. And uh, it would certainly do the job. Looking at some of the other stuff, these are percussion caps. They go right over the nipple and uh, takes a number 11. Some other tools, uh, this is used to tamp down and, and get your ball and patch started. First the short one, you can put a lot, of, a lot of weight behind it. Then you go to the longer one and push it down that much farther and then it's time to use your rod. Uh, I mentioned needing to take that nipple off so that I could uh, Solve my problem with uh, a ball and patch and no powder. This is a tool that's going to be in that bag all the time because you never know. What the heck do I need all this wire for? Well, uh, basically to clean out that nipple in that area to make sure that it's going to fire. Because uh, the dirt builds up on these things real quick, guys. If you're somebody that wants to go to the range with a rifle and shoot... Uh, 200 rounds or even shoot 50 uh, you got a lot of work cut out for you with something like this it's not for everybody this is what you use to measure your powder and basically right here you adjust it to the number of grains you want it's recommended uh, that i use 70 grains for the type of uh, powder that i had you basically pour it down in there and it'll pre-measure it to the right amount and you put that down inside your barrel. Another tool that comes in handy is this is a percussion cap loader. So basically you can load those in spring loaded and then set that right on your nipple and you're ready to go. You can kind of see there's a percussion cap or two loaded in there right now and there you go. And that makes it real easy just to set that right down the top of your nipple and pull it off. So, you know, is that something you need when you're hunting? Well, maybe. If it's cold and, uh, you know, you're trying to handle something that small. A couple other tools. I mentioned an attachment to the rod that screws down into the ball if you have a jam. And I was not able to successfully get this down into the ball which is why I went with plan B. Um, like I said, that's a, a rookie mistake. Hopefully never make it again. This is a little interesting gizmo. It's called a worm. You, and that's when you get, you get a patch stuck down there. And that happened to me uh, earlier today. So you, you basically, it's down at the bottom of the breech. 
you need to get it out, you screw this to the end of your rod, put it down the bottom, you rotate it. Obviously, that's going to grab a hold of any uh, of any cloth and uh, help you pull it out. So, there's lots of uh, there's lots of different kind of uh, accoutrement, if you will. And uh, now you know why I need that purse or shooting bag, if you will. Uh, you just don't know what you're going to need, and if you want to keep shooting, you need to be ready. And I learned, uh, had hands-on with all of this stuff today, uh, with the exception of uh, the conical bullet. So uh, you learn a lot when you do this stuff, and uh, because I'd done a lot of research before, I was able to uh, be in a position where I kind of had an idea what to go to when I needed to troubleshoot. But if, if you do what you're supposed to do, you probably won't have to troubleshoot. But you want to clean between shots, if not between shots, between every couple shots. Um, you never know what's still glowing in that chamber. You give it, give it a little bit of time, you don't have to worry about it. But there's a lot of manufacturers that play into the black powder market, as you can see. Not quite as easy to find as, you know, regular modern ammo, but you can find it nonetheless. And uh, fun day uh, for me at the range shooting this stuff. Let's see what kind of results we got. So this is my first time loading and you see that I've got, uh, I've got my loading tube. I've got it set to 70 grains, which is uh, appropriate for the type of powder I had. There are several types of block powders and uh, my instruction manual uh, has changes in the amount of grains you need depending on the type of black powder you're using. So that's something else to pay attention to. Something else that would be good right here would, would be a little bit of a funnel uh, on top of the, the, the container of black powder, but I was able to uh, not spill too much and uh, fill that up until you're right at the top. And then it's a matter of uh, just swinging over the nipple on the end of uh, your loading apparatus. Here's uh, the FFG powder that I'm using and uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it down now at the end of the barrel. Tap it a few times to make sure that it is all out. And uh, that's real important. Now you're going to see that's the ball that I'm going to use. And uh, that's the patch that I'm going to use. You put it right over the end of the barrel. You place your ball on top. And then you grab your tool first with the short part. Just to get it started down at the end of the barrel. Then the long part. Tap it in. And now you've got a good start to where you can take your cleaning rod out and uh, you want to kind of grab it in the middle or at the bottom to push that down. If you grab the end of it, it's going to be a problem. And here you see me tamping it down, making sure that everything's all the way at the end and seated. You want it nice and tight because that's what's going to help with your accuracy. And now it's just a matter of uh, getting ready to shoot. I'm going to cock that hammer back. And I'm going to use that tool that I showed you uh, to put a percussion cap on the end of the nipple. It's quite easy. It's very small little things. So if you got big fingers, uh, suggest getting one of those. Here you see me not understanding why just the cap is going off. Well, it's because I haven't put powder in it. Go figure. So after clearing that all out, and uh, as we discussed earlier, putting some powder in after taking the nipple off, we're back in business and uh, firing away. Not a lot of kick on this at all. It's uh, more of a push and uh, delightful gun to shoot, without a doubt. And uh, let's talk about targets a little bit and what kind of uh, accuracy we were achieving just at 50 yards. If you look real close, the, the one all the way on the right was my first shot. Uh, then my second shot was low and I adjusted up and you see the two in the red. So this is a nice handy size. I can see why this was popular uh, just in terms of how handy it is to pull it out of a scabbard on a horseback uh, or just carrying it in the woods. Uh, nice handy size rifle and uh, and I really like it. I'm looking forward to doing some deer hunting with it. Um, these aren't for everybody. If you're somebody who uh, doesn't really have the patience for the whole cleaning reload process 
and you just want to pump out a lot of rounds at the range, I get it. Uh, this isn't going to be the rifle for you, but if you're somebody either from a historical standpoint or you're just an, interested in doing some different kinds of hunting, uh, these things are pretty cool. And I believe that as I experiment with different loads, different, uh, different projectiles, things like that, and get some experience, uh, that this is capable of being pretty close to as accurate as I am. And based on today's results, certainly would be comfortable taking a deer from, oh, 100-ish, maybe a little bit more and on in. But uh, just a great rifle, shoulders well. And uh, like I said, it's got that set trigger. So once you pull the other trigger, the front trigger, it takes next to nothing. And that's pretty cool uh, from an accuracy standpoint. So wanted to bring this to you today. I hope you enjoyed it. This is DR Drake 63 saying stay safe guys and keep shooting.